Hello and welcome to this new bonus episode of Offspring the Podcast. So, you know, we've never had all five hosts on one episode of the podcast and this is the first time we're doing that. And I think it's uh, fair enough that we do this now because people need to know who we are. Nobody knows who we are. So let's probably get started with a brief introduction of everybody and everyone who's a part of making this podcast series. Let's start alphabetically. Who comes first then? <laughs> That's Ali or Adrian? I think that would be me. It's Adrian. Yeah. I feel weird. I don't know whether to host or to be a guest on this. Uh, my name's Adrian Laholachomiak. I'm a PhD student at the Max Planck Institute for Cell Biology and Genetics in Dresden, and I study the development of the mammalian skull. And I like podcasts. I don't. I don't know. I really don't know what else to say. We never set a cat, uh, criteria. <laughs> well, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, so it's uh, me now. Hey, I'm Allison Lewis. Uh, I'm also a doctoral researcher at uh, (laughs) the Max Planck Institute for Cell Biology and Genetics, and I study differentiation in the human pancreas. All right, I guess I'm next. Uh, I'm Nico. Uh, So I am also a doctoral researcher at the Max Planck Institute for Neurobiology in Martin Street, to be precise. Very precise. Sandra? Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Sandra. You've never heard of me before, um, but I'm also a new podcast host here. I'm at the Max Planck Institute uh, for Neurobiology um, in the same group like Nico, doctoral researcher as well, and slowly finishing up, and I'm happy to be here. I just, I feel like I need to interject and say that I'm also a doctoral researcher and that I regret not <laughs> no, phrasing no. it that way. You said student, no takes these back. I'm, ta- I'm reversing. Actually, we can, we can fix this all in post. <laughs> yeah, just, post just... is the, post is what I say it is now. You know, <laughs> I'm going to edit it. I'm going to leave it all in. Can... All this banter is going to stay in. We can just make so, everyone yeah. say like, I'm toast. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're all toast. So I think I'm last. <laughs> hey, that worked out in my favor. So I'm Srinath Ramkumar and you've heard my voice all this time and I'm, I'm sure you're bored of hearing from me. And you know I'm from Tiny Little, but now I'm also a doctoral researcher at the Max Planck Institute for Heart and Lung Research. Anyway, now that we're done with introductions, what do we do next? Yeah, I, I thought like maybe it might be nice to see what uh, y- you guys uh, actually uh, thought, thought about the current episodes we had online or all the ones that we did this year. So we had like a lot of bunch of open science topics. Uh, we have heard of the life of a re- researcher in the beginning. And I think we covered the PhD net also quite a bit and the Max Planck Society. So yeah, what do you guys thought of the... Well, I mean, honestly, I would just turn the question back on you guys because you guys put by far the most work into those series, which have really made up the podcast. So how do you feel about how the podcast has gone this year in terms of, I mean, you talked about several series that have come out. Are you particularly proud of, of any series or episodes? What a politician's yeah. answer. Yeah. I mean, we do really have a lot of passion in the open science direction, right? And so I think that's one of the reasons why we really started approaching the whole podcast from this open science and summer of open science direction so we first got in touch with peter suber and then we got in touch with paula stefan and then i was uh, following elizabeth bick on twitter and i was like it's worth giving it a shot we can tweet her and see if she has time and she was like yeah let's do it tomorrow so like you know <laughs> with uh, elizabeth bick it was like one day after we contacted her we were recording the podcast episode so you know it was almost instantaneous I mean, that's, yeah. that's amazing. That's the dream yeah. to get a one day response. <laughs> yeah. One day where you're done recording the episode and you have these episodes like lined up for the next four weeks in advance. So, yeah, I mean, it's good. And also, you know, we do, of course, prioritize the doctoral research work <laughs> primarily. So uh, we, we try to keep the workload for the podcast fairly uh, decent so that, you know, you don't forget that it exists, but you do realize that you can prioritize other things on top of it if necessary. So, yeah, and we, we had really good fun in the beginning where, uh, I mean, I'm not saying we don't have fun now. I mean, 
it was really like we didn't know what we were doing in the beginning and it was completely exploratory and you know those uh, early days into anything you you don't know what's up and how things function but you 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 find your steps in there and now and it's like second nature started. no technical problems no it's just oh, and... <laughs> well of course there's no technical problems when you hear it Somehow Sandra left and came back. So I think there is some technical problems now. <laughs> I, I jinxed it. I don't know. Some something happened. And <laughs> so it's anyway. all it's all good. Everything is perfect, though. Let's hope so. <laughs> I mean, I I think in the beginning of the podcast, though, like we had these ideas for what we wanted to do, and like we had ideas for people and things we wanted to talk about. And we just did that. But now that we've done some of those things, I think we are often thinking about what direction should it go and thinking more towards the future and how we want the podcast to grow rather than just like trying stuff and seeing what works. It, it feels more thoughtful now than maybe it was in the beginning. I mean, it makes sense, right? Now we have some more experience. Um, we can actually think about like uh, not just, okay, one episode and then that's it, but rather cover it from maybe several angles. So there's definitely uh, yeah, more planning involved now and we're more people so we can split the work. Um, so that's nice. Yeah. I mean, I think we already did plan it. We just didn't really uh, have it, you know, down to a T. Like, you know, we, we I think as we progressed, we made it like, we got to know that, okay, at this point, we need to have such and such things ready so we can have this edit ready at this time and then the next edit by this time so we can get feedback from the person who gave the interview. And, you know, so it's like, I think the process of the whole thing sort of fell into this nice workflow pipeline thing. And that that's what took time more than anything else. And Did I think you that, ever ever feel like you're running out of topics or is it more like there's just more and more ideas coming in and um, many more episodes to record? More and more ideas. Definitely the more and more ideas option. No, I mean, also, it's sometimes it's too much even. So we have so many topics that we want to cover because Offspring is just, you know, its its job is to do that to find as broad as topics as possible and try to identify as many, you know, different nooks and crannies where we can poke our nose and try to figure out what's up. To boldly like, go where our, uh, no podcast has gone before. <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't want to oversell ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> I think modesty is important and humility is very important. It's good. <laughs> So yeah, at least, and now, so Adrian and Sandra, you guys joined us slightly uh, after we started doing the whole podcast series. And I think that was already like a, a a good indication that you were interested to do some work in our direction. So what was your motivation? I, don't know, I can start saying something about that. So actually, Nico is a colleague of mine. We're in the same lab. So I followed the process of him starting the podcast and everything. And he told me a few things about it. And then I started listening to the episodes also, and I just really enjoyed what you were doing. I just found it extremely interesting to listen to the episodes. And I also, in general, like podcasts a lot and just to consume information via the podcast format. So I thought it would be a really good opportunity to also join in and help producing some episodes. And also just because I had a few ideas already what I would like to do maybe in the future. So that was my motivation behind it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I kind of came at it from a similar perspective in the sense that uh, Allie's a colleague of mine, let's say, and <laughs> <laughs> those who don't know, she's very modest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, just seeing her get involved, and it's podcasting is the kind of thing that I've been involved in previously, and more broadly, I mean, I I just find science communication to be a really interesting topic to explore. You know, how do you get across? important ideas and how do you use a platform like a podcast to encourage people to think more critically not only about scientific topics but also about kind of the societal structures that surround science and so hopefully in the next year i can put a little bit more time into exploring those ideas well and it's just a shame to let that buttery smooth voice go to waste so i've always been told i have a, a voice for radio <laughs> and a face for radio but that's a different topic you, you, you have a voice for a sportscaster well, thank you <laughs> like maybe I can live commentate some experiments. 
<laughs> you could really announce the play-by-play of. Oh. Uh... All right. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's really good that we have two new people with motivation joining us as well. And uh, Adrian was already a part of one of the former episodes, like the ones where we interviewed the working groups. Yeah. Oh, no, no. This it was a steering group episode, the second steering group episode. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. My mom sent me an email saying she really liked that episode. So. <laughs> well, nice. <laughs> Fans. <laughs> I, got, I got fans, what can I say? <laughs> well, so speaking about fan mail, what do you guys think of the feedback we've gotten so far? Have have, pe- have people contacted any of you? Because, I mean, I'll come to what we received in the mailing list eventually, but what about you folks? Have people come, to you, come up to you and said something? I mean... I- so similar to Adrian, um, my sister actually texts me about the podcast and I find that really adorable because I never, I love my baby sister, but she's not a scientist. And so not even like science adjacent, she works uh, at a law firm. And so it was really nice to ha- to hear her say, oh, what you do is actually really interesting. So it was. It's nice to hear that people who maybe aren't scientists also find hearing about science interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's nice that uh, you, you kind of get the science communication going already there, right? That people find it interesting what that what surrounds uh, like science or the scientific system, I guess. Yeah, I think we've been so much more about meta science this year than science itself. So I, I, uh, so just as a side note or perhaps a topic of discussion for a little later on th- down this episode, is that we do really plan to do a little more deep dives into scientific topics or science science communication topics later on next year. So that's probably going to be more interesting as well for people who are interested in, you know, learning about science itself and not just about the scientific uh, uh, process or the scientific field and the evaluation and yeah. I think I think for me though that I talk about like hardcore deep dive science basically all day every day with my with my colleagues that I think talking about the more social aspects of science was something that was nice to I don't know get out of my system in these early episodes. Because I do think that this aspect of science is also super cool and often not necessarily talked about in academic circles. It's true. I also really enjoy it because up until now, I was mainly a listener also. (laughs) And I really enjoyed the width of the topics that you had. I think it's great to just mix it and have like really surprising topics also of career opportunities or whatsoever. That's really enjoyable as a scientist as well. But then it's also great that we even reach non-scientists, as Ali said, even if it's just family members for now, <laughs> but who knows? Here for the future. <laughs> Pretty soon back. the whole law firm will be listening. She's going to tell all her friends, don't you worry, this law firm in Edmonton, it's going to be all about it. That's great. Okay, so we might as well contact them for some legal representation. <laughs> if necessary. I don't think we can afford it. <laughs> I mean, if they like the podcast so much, they could do pro bono work for us. Let's hope. (laughs) Well, let's hope we do never need it. (laughs) I mean, you know, sometimes you would have to sue somebody if they use our (laughs) our stuff. Our (laughs) jingle. If they use the jingle. We got to retain those intellectual property rights. (laughs) There's something we can talk about next year. Intellectual property. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, as intellectuals, I think uh, IP is something we need to keep in mind. (laughs) We should solicit some topics from listeners. Yes, I mean, definitely Mm -hmm. it would be nice if uh, if anyone interested would just send us a topic or even uh, someone who uh, could be interviewed for that. Uh, Because like we're not experts in all the fields uh, we interview people in either, right? Well, and as we talk a lot amongst each other, um, we're actually even all from kind of the same field of research. We're all biomedical scientists, and there's a lot more science out there that we probably overlook. So, Yeah, and this is something which we do plan to cover next year, right, with some physics people on and some chemistry and at least a little bit of technology or computer science fields but also humanities because... don't forget them yeah, they're yeah, yeah. like also a section in the Max Planck society 
Yeah, no, no. I mean, law falls in there, right? Law is a part of the human sciences people. So perhaps, Ali, we cannot contact your sister if she's interested to <laughs> talk about law. But yeah, maybe, maybe not. Maybe my cousin. Or <laughs> That's a much more reasonable topic. <laughs> I think horizon, so, broadening, or horizon broadening, there we go, is a, a good goal for the next year to try and kind of step outside of our comfort comfort zone a little bit more and feature yeah. science from across the Max Planck group. That'd yeah. Great. I mean, definitely. I, I think with that in mind, like Sandra really uh, was taking some strides in the directions of uh, like equal opportunities, right? Like, can you perhaps give a brief introduction to what that topic that you had in mind was? Yeah, that was something I had in mind uh, when I thought about that I want to join. As you said, our topics around equal opportunity. So there's also a working group in the PhD net um, around equal opportunity. We heard about that already in one of the episodes as well. Um, so this is basically a very broad topic where I have a lot of ideas in mind because equal opportunity is, just covers a lot of things like gender equality, of course, um, especially in science also and feminism and sexism in science, but then also topics like racism, and in, in general, diversity and underrepresented minorities. So these are all ideas where I think we could talk to a lot of people, um, maybe scientists that encountered some of these things or that had problems with uh, those topics. Um, so yeah, this is something that I thought would be great to talk about in the future. No, definitely, because also the, I mean, the Max Planck Society should, uh, as one of the leading research institutions, uh, be one to take an initiative there and make sure that at least within it, uh, everything is as fair as possible. Like, totally. Yeah. Anyway, so I think we do have some uh, nice motivation in that direction. And I think that's the first step. And, you know, if we really feel motivated on some topics, we can always take it forward. And this is where you, the listener, comes into the picture. Because we always have a sort of biased perspective of what we're covering, but we do need you to give us some topics and perhaps some ideas on what you think is something which you would be interested in listening to. Because I'm sure that we are very blind to certain aspects of certain things because we are in this sort of core biological scientific bubble so if you as a listener would like us to cover any topic in terms of uh, uh, anything for example just feel free to shoot us an email at offspring.podcasts at phdnet.mpg.de you probably even tweet us is that am yeah. i using that term right tweet us yeah Twitter, good. TikTok, Instagram, Snapchat. I don't even know if we have any of those. You're showing your no. age, Adrian. <laughs> I thought that's modern stuff. <laughs> so, yeah, you can follow us on Twitter at MPPHDNet Podcast. It's just Max Planck PhD Net Podcast. So it's fairly simple. Thank you. Anyway. <laughs> Okay, so I kind of feel I always talk a lot and I'm usually the one filling in the silences. So I would mm -hmm. like someone to take away two minutes of silence and continue talking for now. Okay, that was very awkward. Everyone's just... Uh, <laughs> just if, if, you, if, you, yeah, if you would <laughs> see... Uh, <laughs> and now we're all talking at the same time. Like. <laughs> <laughs> like talking, so. <laughs> what kind of bridge is that? You need to like lead into a topic and like you can't just like... Massage know, your way into it. Exactly. <laughs> and well, maybe I have a question. I have a question. Yeah, go for, ahead. Yeah. So maybe for the most experienced hosts here, Srinath and Nico, what were the most surprising episodes for you, actually? So where did you just, I don't know, learn something completely new or were just really surprised by what you heard? Sandra, you're a natural. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you do realize this, this episode is not going to be edited. It's going to go straight out. Yeah, okay. I'm fine with that. Raw. As long as we don't put the video on. Yeah, okay. The video is not going yeah, anywhere. The video is not being recorded. <laughs> anyway. Nico, you want to take this first? Sure. Um, hmm, interesting. Uh, there, I mean, we had a bunch of episodes that were, how should I say, uh, like the uh, Paula Stefan one was uh, interesting, but definitely not uh, 
positive, I would say. Like the outlooks of becoming a postdoc is, I would say, not so great, which uh, if you want to stay in science is, of course, uh, bad. And uh, what else? Yeah, the Elizabeth Big one was also a bit, uh, yeah, eye-opening. I didn't think that there was so much uh, misconduct uh, happening. And yeah, it's crazy. Like, I don't know how people actually go get through with these things. Like, just... Yep duplicating images it's yeah insane yeah. i also like that episode a lot because i also followed her already before that on twitter and already by all her posts i was so surprised and so shocked also just what's going on and even though when you're a scientist and you're working in that field you're not aware of that mm. at least i was not yeah and um so that's really yeah. yeah, still shocking. It was a that was like the standout episode for me as well. Just like the shock value, the the stories she told, I I literally couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I mean, uh, just as a side note, so we got an email after the episode with Elizabeth Big got released. We got an email from uh, a potential new student of one of the Max Planck Institutes as. Uh, you know, he came across this uh, weird situation in his country where people were really asking around if they could cite someone else's paper in their publication in order to increase the age index. And this was... Wait, I mean, so, wait, so, so I, I think you need to explain it a bit better. So they were, they were basically in their own university. No, 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 no. These were not them. within the university. I thought it was like this within was their country, publicly, though, at least. So yeah, it was within like, the country, okay. but this was publicly. He was publicly asking if there are any people who are publishing in these fields so that he could give links to certain papers and, you know, he would in turn... Basically, you know, publicize citing each them. other. So, this, exactly. so basically, they would uh, just uh, stay in contact and just put each other on the papers to increase their age index, which is crazy. I mean, it's a, it's age index hacking. Yes, exactly. No, yeah, exactly. So this is something that Elizabeth told me was called a citation ring. Yeah. And these things called citation rings exist. And apparently they have been, uh, you know, these are very hard things to tackle by journals or by, uh, you know, any ratings agency, which basically calculates the age index through citations. So because you cannot really trust citations anymore so it's basically sort of hacking at the fundamental value or this distributed currency that we have in science which is citations and how well reputed your research is so you can see it's like it's kind of it kind of feels like this weird uh, uh, at attack at your the core value of scientific uh, literature and scientific publishing so yeah anyway this was a bit chilling when we got an email about this and uh, i mean i think it just gets yeah. to the deeper issue that like so much of science has kind of circulated around this core metric of citations yeah and that obviously because science tends to attract people who want to get ahead that like they're going to find a way to Game get ahead, use that system they're going to they're going to find the most you know optimal strategy within the system and they're going to they're going to use it. and and so like within the rules of the game that this is not necessarily nice but it's it's it certainly works so but i mean i think this brings up like a kind of side issue that i think would be a really interesting episode for a podcast is to talk about the whole field of like bibliometrics that has cropped up around science and how it's used by funders and universities and like all kinds of things and like are these metrics really that valuable that we should be using them this broadly in science and so i think that that's like an interesting broader topic outside of just integrity it's like one of the like current problems that uh, i mean something like sf dora tries to tackle right research assessment how do you define okay good research and then of course if you take a look at all the steps people did uh, look at the read everything really carefully then you can do it but then who has the time to read like a paper or a manuscript they get i don't know three times really carefully uh, and then give a good re or a review because usually people have like I don't know two three hours to give a review and that is yeah. not a lot. Yeah. yeah. So it's just time anyway. is a limiting factor. No. That, speaking of time being a limiting factor. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> we are now at the end of this episode. How was this as for a segue? Wasn't this great? I mean, that was on. that was seamless. Ooh. You're really your expertise is ooh the experience. The best way to make a segue <laughs> seamless is to call attention to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so speaking of time being a limiting factor, the Zoom call is about to <laughs> drop off in three minutes. Believe it or not, we don't use a Zoom premium account. I know, shocking. Yeah, because we don't have money and we're not asking <laughs> people for money. So send and your money we're... to Offspring to our <laughs> podcast. <laughs> oh, no, please don't. Please don't, actually. I don't think we have any way to accept money. Yeah. I don't even think we're allowed to. I maybe we need lawyers after all. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe after this episode airs, we should uh, consider pay your taxes. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Germany, pay your taxes, please. Yeah, because Max Planck is publicly funded. Although we are not funded, this is completely unfunded. Anyway, so, <laughs> so uh, for a free podcast, I think we're doing quite well, <laughs> and. Uh, for a free podcast, it's going to be free in the future. Free, fair, and open. Like, uh, like the science we love. Countries. <laughs> like science we love. Let's keep it free, fair, and open. And let's have a good break. Although, you know, during COVID times, I can understand it's uh, going to be difficult. So, yeah. So, let's at least try to take a good mental and physical break from podcasting and reconvene at the start of next year. What do you guys think? That sounds great. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Happy holidays, everyone. Nico, you know, nodding doesn't uh, show <laughs> up on the recording. The, the physical you, physicality of audio is not yeah, great. I don't, I don't want to like speak while other people are uh, speaking, right? We have less than a minute, Nico. Now's your chance. Uh, I don't know. I'm nervous. <laughs> Say goodbye. Okay, so okay. now everybody knows how this episode goes. Usually, Nico's always nervous, and I have to edit parts of that out. <laughs> <laughs> not this time. No, not this time. Nico's going to be there in public. Oh, in all his silence. Uh, yeah. Glorious silence. Anyway, so... Thank you all for joining today, and this was really fun. And uh, you, the listener, I'm talking to you directly. Please send us feedback. We're looking forward to it. And we look forward to you listening to the next season of episodes coming up in either January or February. We don't know yet. Until See then. you next year. See ya. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs> <laughs>